Hey there guys and welcome back to the joystick for, well, a joystick at any rate. We may very well make many of these, but a joystick for the arcade prototype controller. Uh, one of these things, I've been putting this one off because I've been having more fun with programming stuff, but we got to get back to it and that's why we're doing it today. Get this done and created and then we will be on to the next project. I do have another project that I am working on in parallel with this off stream, which will be a little bit of a primer for a third project that I will be doing on stream. So I look forward to that. That's a little bit of a teaser at the moment. So at where we were at last time, we installed this button. I did a little bit of stuff with here. This may look different to you and it looks like I didn't even complete what I was working on or I just actually just misdesigned it a little bit is what it actually looks like. Regardless, uh, we're going to ignore that part for right now. Um, next thing that in theory should happen right now is we should go ahead and toss the two, the left and right click onto here. I'm going to pass on that for right now just because it has been five days since we last worked on this. And I feel like we need to make some serious progress at the moment. So that means moving on to getting the rest of this put together and then this will be the uh, finishing off the shaft assembly so we'll polish this off integrate the mounting plate onto this and then get places for the microcontrollers and then we'll come back for the last two buttons because the last two buttons are more or less the same thing as we did here so that is the game plan for today I want to get as much progress done as possible and buttons are frankly not going to be that important you know they'll get done eventually and are not as interesting so as i was talking about before well there's a couple things that happen here um do 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 we got this set up uh, just to actually i should have pulled this up it didn't occur to me let me go ahead and let's find all right here we go cool and you can see this because I got full screen capture on. So anyway, here's a typical, the, I've, when we first started this, this was the uh, layout that I showed you. So, so far, we're going to pass on the rest of the top handle part. We've got the shaft in place. We just need to connect it to the top handle part. That part's easy. We got the mounting disc and the little rotator uh, pivot joint in there. That's this guy right here. So this is the mounting plate of the pivot joint. We've got those. So next, I mean, so... First, we'll go ahead and connect, you know, the shaft to the handle, like I said. But after that, after we got the shaft connected to the handle, we'll get this uh, spring-mounted area set up. This is what recenters the joystick. And then after we have that set up, then we can go ahead and place the micro switches. And it's got a little actuator on it. Uh, again, as I was talking before, the actuator has uses. So we very well may put it in there, but it's not 100% necessary. It doesn't seem like it seems like we could, in theory, just have the shaft run into the micro switches. But one of those things, uh, no reason not to add an actuator just to give ourselves a little bit more adjustment. So that should be everything. That should be the rest of the game plan. Let's get to it. So first thing we got to do. Uh, I actually want to go ahead and make the cover for this. So as I stated, the mounting plate right here, uh, the mounting plate itself or something we put over it, and I've been thinking that we're going to actually cover the mounting plate up with another piece of plastic. So the mounting plate will get bolted down to the uh, 2020 extrusion. In theory, it gets bolted to a cabinet, but in our case for prototyping this will be bound, bolted down to the 2020 extrusion and then over top of that and again in theory this would be just on top of the cabinet uh, controller panel on top of that will be a piece of plastic to cover it up to add it uh, to it uh, the point being is that the reason I want it is just because this is rotating in a curve actually you know what I may be making this more difficult for myself than I want to yeah I may be making this more difficult for myself than I want to nah it's fine it's fine it's fine we can continue as planned 
Nah, okay. Yeah, now I'm staring at it. And uh, I was just going to put a dome here with a big hole in the top. Uh, we had talked about at one point how normally these guys, let me pull it back up, have little plates that cover up the hole. So you see this little plate right here to cover up the mounting plate hole. Uh, guide dust washers, disc covers, this thing right here that they're talking about. Um, that becomes a little bit difficult when I go and add the uh, dome to the top. That is what I'm hesitating on now. It occurs to me that that actually does um, make things more difficult for me. So, let us see. Well, all right. Here, here's the argument. The argument is both of those things, uh, this round dome thing and any specialized dust cover. Uh, so the dust cover is not really necessary, kind of. It depends how big we make the hole and how close up to this curve it is. But any of that stuff is really cosmetic, so I think we will just leave that off and just continue with attaching this and then building off of the mounting plate. Because since that's cosmetic and that doesn't really apply to this prototyping rig, there's no need to really tackle that problem at the moment. And it's, you know, one of those things you could probably figure out with a little bit of thought, but again not a problem we need to tackle right now and the objective for today is to get this thing actually polished off so that i can print it again with the exception of perhaps the buttons i'm skipping over the buttons for right now just because they're easy you saw how i did this one we'll just reapply what i did here to the front and be done with it so it's not that important to do on stream if we don't get to it so anyway all that being said uh, we should probably lower this shaft down. Let's see what we're looking at for heights here. Just to get it a little closer to the pivot point. And I will go ahead and hide the handle. So we got 50 millimeters. And the inside of the handle is... I forget. Uh, that's not going to give me a diameter, is it? So let's come back here in the timeline and see how I drew it. Do, do, do. I believe that's how I drew it right there. Nope, that's not how I drew it. Where are we at? Where's the initial creation of this guy? Oh, it's this guy right here. So what diameter did I give you? 75, so half the diameter, which is this half, would be, you know, 37.5. Math on stream, I think that's 37.5. So 37.5 minus the 50, or 50 minus 37 is about 12. That's actually not that bad. All right, so I'll just instead, instead of shortening, yo Gail, nice to see you too. Oh, cool to see the joystick. I can't read. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, we did come back to it. Uh, one of those things, I put it off for the other stuff because I was excited, like I said, to do the other stuff. But it has been percolating for a while now, and therefore we're getting to it. So first thing I'm going to do is slide this guy down. Modify. Actually, first thing I may do is do the hole actually just because this gets a little bit complicated in here so i'm going to grab this and the reason it gets a little bit complicated is because of our odd shape of our handle so since it gets complicated on that i'm going to go ahead and actually do the hole first and then we'll take it from there so let's and actually i shouldn't do that on this guy i should do this inside of handle so just really quick, do that and redo exactly what we just did. Intersect. And now we can turn off these bodies to see what we're looking at. Turn off the button panel. Turn off the body and these guys so that we can see what we're talking about. There's our outline. We want to throw a little divot in here for the, what you call it? For the shaft to go into. And I'm going to go ahead and project the shaft out as well. Um, if I project the body, will that go ahead and give me the full outline of the shaft? It doesn't necessarily matter, but it does make my life a little more enjoyable. Even if I don't have the outline here, I can still intersect with the top edge. So that's why it didn't matter. That's why I was saying it didn't matter. So here, now we can do this. 
Uh, actually, you know what? Let me... Nah, yeah, that's fine. We can do it that way. And I will just make that guy... Yeah, no, I take it back. I take it back. I keep on changing my mind. We'll throw another line in here. This makes more sense. Make this guy collinear. And then this is going to be our wall thickness, which we're running with two for right now, as mentioned. And then it's a question of how much of the shaft we want to hold on to, which is this distance roughly right here. I mean, technically speaking, it is... No, actually, I'm right about that one. It is that distance because that's the wall right there. So this is literally how much shaft we're holding on to. We'll make that 10 millimeters just as a decision. You know, it's a little less than half an inch. Uh, yeah, 10 millimeters. I think that I'm, think I'm happy with that. So let us... Uh, next thing, actually, I take it back. I'm going to drag across here because I want a flat bottom. That's the whole entire point of doing this. And I'm going to turn this back into a solid line. That way I can get a profile. And we will go ahead and revolve these guys because we're looking for a circle. And I'm revolving this whole entire shape around the origin. So let's turn this on and see what happens. And by see what happens, I mean I hope I know what happens. But you get to see if you're not uh, you know, entirely sure. I want the z-axis, please. 360, yep, there it is. That's exactly what I was hoping would happen. So, here we go, we make that. Uh, we are not actually sticking out, which is good. Now, the only question is, is whether or not it's actually forming two. And actually, you know what, I should... Mm, duh, 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 duh. Because this is a weird shape, um, I'm going to have to, and we did this a little bit on the plates on the inside here. Again, I did some of these not on stream. That was the one scuff stream. But the um, problem here is that we're gonna have gaps probably along the sides, and it's one of these things that's hard to tell. Let's go ahead and hit join, and then I'm going to go ahead and make a section analysis let's do a section analysis toss it in here and take a look and where's my rotations uh, I'll just do it by hand uh, so X angle 15 20 45 just taking a look around here you can see how it's cutting through the edges so I can see whether or not we have any gaps in here 55 just spot checking just to make sure because once we get to 180 then we're pretty much sure so it's not that difficult to just run through really quick just to make sure that we don't have any gaps because it's a weird shape that's the only reason why I'm a little bit concerned if it wasn't for the weird shape then if it was just a circle then I'd be pretty confident that we wouldn't have gaps but because it's a little bit of a weird shape I am just paranoid all right uh, 90 degrees, 100, 30, 40. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. 80, just for the heck of it. All right, cool, 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 cool. So it doesn't look like we got any gaps in there from the shape. So now we have a flat base in here, a flat face for the handle to align to the shaft which is the most important thing. Obviously, this also aligns, or, you know, captures the handle in the shaft. That's the other nice thing that it does. But the more important thing is that it actually enables me to drop this guy down at this point. Click that. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I actually can click it. Nice. And now that is aligned and snug. All righty. We'll capture position there, and then we're going to go ahead and make our joint. And we are doing that, and it is, in fact, rigid. I don't see a reason to do a rigid group, so that's why I did not do a rigid group. Uh, we did leave our button up there, which is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so let's, before we align that, make sure those are uh, group or uh, assembled as built joints, rather. So... Uh, this is going to be a rigid group. I'm going to say, 
and do not include child components. So it's going to be that, that, and that. Well, actually, it should be that, that, and the whole entire push button. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just for right now, because I don't feel like adjusting it, just make a rigid group between these two just for the time being. Really, there should be like a slider in here and maybe in here, maybe not. Maybe you just do rigid between there if you want to, but there should be a slider in there to actuate the button. Not terribly important right now. It's more important to make sure that nothing falls out of place when I assemble these or when I align these rather. And it looks like the alignment derped up. So let's go ahead and fix that. Line. Where's that face? There it is. There we go. And we hit finish. All right, cool, 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 cool. Now, if I drag this around, the handle stays with it, which was the goal. Um, this dome shape right here, I'm kind of curious because I've never had to make that type of, uh, what you call it, planar, I guess. Or ball. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and throw that in there. All right, all right. I'm game, I'm game. Um, this to that would be rigid, in theory. And as built, that to that, and that going to be ball. And let me turn off. I want to leave that on. We can turn the handle off, the button plate off. Uh, actually, yeah, you know what? I should just turn the whole entire shaft assembly off. Now, how do I position this for this specific joint? I've never actually, like I said, used one of these joints, types of joints before. So, I guess it's that one. Yeah, it looks right to me. All right, cool, sweet. I'll take it. And we can set joint limits. So... Let's see, that one. Yeah, okay. Uh, set joint limits. Edit joint limits. There we go. Pitch, y'all unroll. So which one is... All right, so that's pitch. So technically speaking, that can be 360. I really don't care. So that one actually doesn't have a... Uh, what you call it? Y'all? Which one's y'all? That's y'all. All right, that's the one I want at most 30 degrees in both directions. Um, I guess that would be minus 30. There we go. Minus 30 and 30. And then roll, which is that guy. What's this look like? That guy actually doesn't have, oh, shoot me. I always hit escape when I shouldn't. Derp, 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 derp. All right, let's. So y'all is the only one, bottom line, y'all is the only one we need. Because that's the only one that I'm really concerned about. You can spin the joystick around all you want. So let's put this back in and see that in action. So there we go. There's that. And we can rotate these other ones too. Cool, cool, cool. And there's the other. Yeah, this guy absolutely 100% doesn't matter. These two are the main directions that we're rotating in. All right, cool. Awesome. That's a really cool thing I haven't done before, that uh, ball-shaped joint. All righty. So next up, we need the uh, spring assembly. So let's hop on into the mounted plate. And the spring... I was thinking about getting a spring off of Amazon just so that I didn't have to... Again, I can turn my own. I've done it plenty of times before, but the fact that I found out that we can get them off of Amazon specifically for joysticks kind of makes me want to... Uh, Amazon.com because I've never been to Amazon on this one, evidently. On this user. Let's see, let's see. Uh, joystick spring. 
Okay, never mind. I take it back. Those are kind of expensive. I think I will just to uh, turn my own. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a bit on the expensive side. I take it back. All right. That's not happening anymore. <laughs> I will make my own. Uh, so, oh, I should have grabbed dimensions at least while I was over there, though. Again, I'm not entirely sure what the dimensions should be. Let's see. Do you, any of you guys have dimensions? Okay. About three quarters of an inch. An average of three quarters of an inch, it looks like, between these two or three that I'm looking at. Let's look at these guys just to see. All right. So about three quarters of an inch is what we'll do down here for the spring. And this will be the next plate that will retain the spring. So we're just going to obviously pretty easy stuff. Just do that and make a plate. Uh, we will make it. Uh, let's see what do they have any dimensions on their width is the next question about an inch wide out to out. Okay. Cool. So we'll just make that one inch. Uh, we'll make that one and a quarter. And actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then I'll put a wall on it just to make sure the spring doesn't slide around too much. Uh, I mean, I'll leave it at three just because it is a, you know, the spring is going to exert a little bit of force. So let us go ahead and do this. We're going to use, again, three. Uh, I should have. I take it back. Sorry. This is going to be a new component. So, and we are doing thicker three millimeter walls just because it is the spring and I feel a little bit key, uh, safer with it. Spring retaining plate. And on the bottom of this, I'm going to see if I can't track down because I don't actually keep a uh, which cots. I don't keep, oh, what are these things called? E-rings. I don't keep E-rings around. I don't really use them very much. I'll see if I can't track them down around what, uh, this shop or whatnot and see if I can get some E-rings to use. Otherwise, we'll solve the whole entire uh, how exactly we fasten this plate and keep it from slipping problem later on. One of those things, a little bit, uh, not a terribly difficult, rather, problem to solve. And this only really needs to be just a little bit lip to make sure the spring stays relatively centered. So that is that. Just go ahead and turn this red, I think. Uh, bu -bu -bu, red plastic. There we go. Oh, did I not join? That's silly. Why did I not join? Three minus and join. All right, there we go. Try this again. Red plastic. All right, uh, remove. Oh, I see what happened there. You tried to get multiple things. I'm on to you. What if I just do that? There we go. Cool. So now that's colored. And next up would be the uh, plates for the, uh, what you call it? The micro switches. Now I'm going to have to grab some micro switches. Um, do we want to use the bigger ones? Because I do have some extra, well, I only have a couple of extra bigger ones. Otherwise we can use the small ones. Where is my bag? Um, hmm. You know what? I think, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to use the bigger ones because I'm pretty sure the joystick uses the bigger ones. And probably for a good reason. The smaller ones don't have as much of a 
throw on them. They don't click as far. So we'll go ahead and stick with, I'm trying to look for a picture of their micro switches. I do not see them in here. Maybe on another page, I'm not gonna bother looking for it, but we are going to go ahead and grab this micro switch. Huh, did I not? Wow, did I really not make that its own component? I am feeling really silly right now. Okay. Why did I not make it its own component? Yeah, I'll do this. Make sure that's everything. That is everything. I don't have the uh, actual button model up on here. We'll have to fix that at some point, but I will go ahead and mm, nah, I don't really want to export it. Where's the button I'm looking for? Save copy as. That's the button I'm looking for. There we go. Save copy as. Uh, micro switch. And again, later on, this is just a uh, for the time being, but later on I will come back and actually make this a reasonable, competent. And these all came in as base features, huh? Anyway. I will come back and make this a competent model later on. Not important for the stream. What is your error? All right, you know what? It's good enough for right now. So let's go ahead and insert this in. Again, the goal is tonight to get this thing done tonight so that I can actually start getting pieces assembled. So, or at least close enough that I can just finish it off stream really quick and then uh, tomorrow when I have time. Although tomorrow I have D&D &D, as mentioned on previous streams. Uh, for the record, while I'm getting this imported here and getting myself all sorts of confused, I have been plugging Pathless Podcast. I'm not entirely sure if we're actually recording this one. I just found out this afternoon when I looked into it that we didn't actually record the earlier sessions of this campaign. So, uh... That is a question whether or not we're actually going to be recording this campaign section. As always, you can feel free to go, however, over to Pathless Podcast and listen to the rest of the campaigns. We have several. We have Pumpkin Spice, Lightlessness. Uh, we just finished up the Lost Minds of Fandelever. And we also have side content such as Tavern Talk. And uh, what was the other one? We had a DM design corner that I ran quite a few episodes of. Anyway, we got plenty of content over there, so if you're interested in D&D stuff, feel free to stop over at pathlesspod.com, pathlesspod.com. Uh, let's see. So, I'm going to need a little bit of space offset from this guy because when this paddle pivot pivots, uh, actually, let us go ahead and make that a rigid group really quick so that I can actually demonstrate that. Um, come up here, mounting plate. There's this joint, right? That's the ball joint. So let's come up higher and find the previous one and modify that. All right, so there's the, okay, both of these are rigid. So which are you rigid for? All right, I'm gonna change you in that case. Let's roll over there. One more. I'm gonna turn this into a rigid group instead because we keep on adding stuff to this. So I'm gonna hop down here to where we actually have stuff. This will be at the very end and I'll just make sure not to touch this ball joint until everything is uh, selected. So we need this mounting plate, this spring retaining plate, the shaft, and the handle, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and undo the rigid for the handle as well, just because it's redundant at this point. I believe that's this guy. 
it is that guy so let's delete that because that's redundant and I'm gonna double check this guy really quick to make sure this works uh, that does not work good 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 oh I see what I did wrong here it shouldn't be mounted plate it should be pivot there we go try again all right there we go all right anyway so point being the point that I was getting to and I wanted to have this visually for you um, you see how the plate actually gets lower on this edge as we get down here so we need to give ourselves space one of those things again in theory could do math or could just spitball it spitballing it is easier for the moment and if that doesn't work then we can do math so I'm just gonna go 10 millimeters down spitball it and let's go ahead and pivot this guy now I said earlier 30 degrees and I keep on defaulting to 30 degrees just because 30 degrees is a really nice number but again just like the previous controller it's really less than that is all you really want for the swing is what I keep on finding out so frankly somewhere between 10 and 15 is all we really need and as you can see we're only moving like maybe five millimeters I'm gonna go ahead and keep this at 10 millimeters actually I'll back it up to eight to compromise but I don't want to go actually down to five I want to because things are not going to actually line up this well in real life and then we can go ahead and actually since this time I will go ahead and make sure I make the uh, component first and this is in the top level isn't it it is so let us enter into the mounting plate and throw that construction off of there eight millimeters and then create a new uh, component which is the micro switch plate now the micro switch plate let me go ahead and pull up this other one can be a lot more complicated than we're doing right now because we have a ball shaped uh, pivot ball shaped pivot and a ball shaped hand handle because this uh, and that's really bad way of saying it because all handles are basically ball shaped but the feel the ergonomics of this joystick really lends itself to full 180 uh, I don't know how you describe this but all degrees of motion basically with the exception of up and down so pitch and yaw it lends itself to and for that reason uh, if we look here you can set these gates up these restrictor gates as it's talking about here to change how the joystick moves whether it moves just two directions four directions eight directions they have different gates that you can put on there that's not a feature we're going to be bothering with for our joystick because our joystick the way it's built it doesn't really make sense for it to only move in two or four directions we're going to let it do the full eight which is you know for left right back diagonals and rotating between the diagonals one of those things diagonals uh only count as two inputs anyway so even if you rotate through even if you do you know Hidoken quarter circle even at that point you're technically not going any more than three directions down down right and right because there's only four micro switches there's only two micro switches you're interacting with if we had more micro switches then you could say okay there's 16 directions let's say or something like that but since we're sticking to four the maximum number of directions that we can hit at any one time is two directions which would be two in each corner for a total of eight directions so that's the explanation there on gates and why I'm not bothering with them and what they're used for. So let us go ahead and get this micro switch plate drawn. And actually, let me set up this micro switch to get it in place. Uh, this per particular micro switch is the one off of the LEDs. Uh, off of the buttons rather three inch buttons which means that it has these prongs for the LEDs so I'm going to uh, well let me see if I can modify that really quick where you at oh you're got imported inside the spring retaining plate that's not good all right timeline is gonna look a little silly here but and we cannot edit it in place right yep cannot edit it in place but ooh, excuse me pardon me uh, I can break this link and edit it. Uh, no, I can't. I take it back. They stopped me from doing that too. All right. 
Anyway, we're going to live with it in that case for now. And as I was going to say, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this in place for right now. Just as a point of reference. So let's get this lined up here. Flip that over. And then we can go ahead and modify a line. Whoops, that's not modify a line. Again, I don't have the button in here just yet, but all this stuff is going to be adjustable anyway. These micro switches, we're gonna have them on adjustable slides to begin with in order to change the throw of it. So its position only needs to be relatively close and then we can adjust from there. So this is a lined up square now to where we want it to be. So I'm just gonna slide it a bit and then that will be our minimum and we will be good. Components, micro switch, I will move it down three just because I'm going to be putting the plate there and I don't feel like moving again. If I didn't move it three, then I have to slide it down again once we put the plate in there. So I'm just going to move it three to start off with. And let us start out with five is too little, right? Yeah. So five is too little because we have an eight millimeter shaft. I'm pretty sure this is eight millimeter if I recall correctly. So that's only one millimeter past the shaft. So let's do minus four minus, uh, again, this is going to dictate the minimum throw we have. So let's do just another four to start out with. And then we can again, adjust this out on the plate. So we can now start drawing the plate. And where is my plane? There's my plane. I'm gonna project this guy and the center shaft uh, that is not the center shaft and also i want to be on forms not bodies at the moment each one has its use but we are not using the other ones so turn these guys off and whoops we can turn this micro switch off itself and this body and what else do we got on right now That's a sketch somewhere right there. Cool. Alrighty, and origin right there. So obviously this center hole, we need to widen this out. Actually, um, so technically speaking, it doesn't even have to be a hole. Like it doesn't have to be round. It could be a weird shape if we really wanted it to. I'm gonna keep it around though. And do, 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 do. One of these things, actually, before I dimension that one, we're gonna, this hole is not gonna be correct because I did not model it up on this guy. Again, I did a really quick job on the model on this guy, evidently. So this is gonna be 2.5 though, I'm pretty sure. And I'm just gonna put it in that corner and this corner and those will be our mounting holes for now again this may have to be tweaked later but that is less important at the moment and now we can go ahead and throw our slots in slots and again this slot will determine exactly how much we can move and this slot will be tangent to this hole that way it's the same size okay that's what that does. And the overall throw distance that we want to add. So right now we're at minus four off the shaft. So if we go up to minus 10, that would be six millimeters. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to assume that's enough, but we'll find out, you know, once we actually start dealing with this. So we can go ahead and make these construction lines because we won't actually be using them. And we'll toss the other one down here. I could, in theory, create a plane and mirror this, but that is a hassle. So this is much faster. And make these guys equal. And there's that. And we only really need two mounting holes. I don't see the need to uh, add extra mounting holes for the micro switches. So let us now uh, basically, this distance here, which let's check it. So that's six millimeters from that thing. We can go ahead and toss that back over here. 
So this is going to be six millimeters. And we just need to make sure that, uh, so in theory, this edge that you're seeing right here, this arc going 90 degrees to be tangential to this, or yeah, tangential to that. I don't know why my brain suddenly thought that that's not how that word worked, but uh, that the point at which this arc is tangential to this face, we want to be able to clear that. So actually we want to be able to clear the whole line. So let me just draw the line in. I take it back and this is going to be parallel to that. So this is the, uh, in theory, the furthest back. I drew this slot wrong. I'm sorry. That was a stupid on my part. Drew the slot the wrong way. Slot, slot, slot. Slot has to go the same direction. That would make sense. <laughs> All right, it's an easy fix, no big deal. Equals, and we're back to where we are. So, point being is actually in that case, do, 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 do. We want to do off the front end here. That would make more sense. This is going to be six. That's the con uh, what you call it. And we will go ahead and throw a line tangential to that and parallel to the front side. So this is the face of the micro switch when we slide it all the way back. That's basically what this line represents. Okay, so now we can make sure that this circle is tangential to that. So now when we slide this all the way back, the shaft can get all the way to this edge uh, to be straight across here. Um, I'm probably doing that a little bit wrong, uh, but I don't think that I'm doing it wrong enough. So in other words, I think I actually can suck this in a little bit, but it's not necessary. So, I mean, unless I wanted to Let's see what we're at here. What was that distance there? Uh, right there. So it's half a millimeter. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> that is a bit tight to there. So let's do this then. Again, this doesn't really need to be this far because the actuator is going to go ahead and hit the uh, micro switch down here. So that actuator is going to give us a little extra reach, which is why we don't need to actually have this clear all the way up to this line. That the, that's the uh, rationale there. And therefore, in order to give myself a little bit of meat here, I'm going to do this. And actually, that is a good point. I can delete this guy altogether because I'm doing it this way. So this is my minimum wall thickness that I want here, which I'm going to go ahead and give it 1.5 instead of the full 2 just because I want to be greedy. And why are you... Oh, you were not actually uh, concentric. That is why. There we go. I was going to say, why is that not constrained? All right. Cool. So now we have our two slots, right, for the micro switch to stay in. We have the center hole for the shaft to go in. And now we can go ahead and draw the rest of the plate. And again, the plate could be different things, uh, different shapes. I'll go ahead and make it square just because that's easy. One of these things, toss my center line in, center line up on the hole. And now we just got to make sure that we have enough space on the back end here. So again, same thing that I did up here, just add in a little bit of buffer and then we can, whoops, make sure we only select one line to start out with. So there's that, and we want to make this to be square is what we want to make because this is going to be patterned all the way around, which means that all the distances are going to be the same in each direction. So in theory, this micro switch and these holes should be able to rotate up here because it's everything is centered and everything is square, and it will be the same space in theory. I mean, unless I totally screwed something up and am being stupid. But hopefully that is not the case. And also I'm going to fillet these edges here because obviously sharp corners are not pleasing. So let's throw our three millimeters in here that I was talking about. And then we can go ahead and extrude those mounting holes. And once we have that, then we can pattern it around. And once we pattern it around, everything will be done.
So let's pattern features, the mounting holes. I'm going to go ahead and use this hole instead of the axis. And that looks right. So I'm going to hit OK. And then we can also pattern the micro switch. Pattern, circular pattern, component, micro switch around the same. And take that up to four. And we groovy. So there's our micro switches. And as you can see, our micro switches are way too close. Uh, this is one of those deals where that will have to be fixed. Uh, so you see the center line that I have here? We're going to go ahead and use that to be to fix it. Uh, that also means that this minimum throw distance is going to have to be taken up by the actuator. So I'm going to have to have an actuator big enough to reach that because obviously this is moving much further away from the center of the hole. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's um let's see let's see let's see i am going to toss another clearance around here which is just going to be half a millimeter and then uh, let me turn some stuff off here so that i can actually see what i'm working on now do 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 that is that that is that that micro switch Okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to delete this guy, and that's going to free me up. And delete that guy, and that guy's going to free me up. And we're going to just go off of numbers instead. So, all this stuff should be relative to each other. They are. Let us go ahead and dimension that as, well, that is correct, but I want that to be a diameter. That's the diameter of the hole. And let us see. What else do I got that's, oh, probably this line should not be, and now that line could be intersecting. All right, let's dimension this guy out just to make sure that he is also set and change him over to diameter. Yeah, so this guy is free to move, which is good. That's what I was hoping for. Now, what did I do to get this guy stuck is the question. Which one of you? I'm going to delete the center hole. All right, deleting the center hole is not the thing. Which of these dimensions are? Oh, that guy? Yeah, that guy helped, but not enough. This guy is to that which dimension here is constraining my movement because I want to be able to drag this guy out hmm all right let's just start deleting stuff all right that thing evidently whatever that was was my problem so I'm gonna delete the center line for the time being just so it doesn't get in my way oh there we go I see what's going on here. You are quinkadink with that. And by quinkadink, I mean, yep, there we go. That guy's quinkadink. There we go. All right, much better. So now you can be on here. And this is my six millimeter right here. And that's the edge of the micro switch. So that, I want that to be tangent to that and tangent to that line there we go there we go now what else am I missing here well let me toss this in here this will be our two millimeter or 1.5 millimeter clearance for the center circle actually the center circle was tangent over here wasn't it oh no the tangent the center circle was uh, tangent to this guy because that's the guy we needed clearance for so what 
else am I looking for here? I'm not sure why that guy is. What you call it? This guy should be tangent to that edge. And let me do this. 24.33. Okay, so we can dimension these guys. 24.33. All right, there's that, that gets that back guy in line. And then we just gotta figure out why you are saying that you can still move, which is not kosher. I don't know, I honestly do not know, but what I do know is that we should be able to extrude this at this point and it'll be fine. So, we're going to deal with it and before we bring the uh, what you call it micro switches around I'm going to realign this micro switch to the new mounting holes that corner to uh, I wanted to get down into this corner it's a little hard to yeah there we go that should work all right cool and that should be fine again unfortunately can't actually see the mounting holes yet but now that we rotate this around we should have a millimeter clearance between these guys it doesn't quite look like it but that should be all right we have enough we have clearance away from this so it's a bit overkill to be fussing about that so now i'm just going to fillet these corners just to make it a little bit nicer And we will basically be pretty close to done. Yeah, 25. What's 25 look like? Good. Um, what's minimum distance here? Just because that did suck in my minimum distance. Minimum distance 1.25. All right, we'll back you up a little bit. 23. Just try to get past this corner. 20. All right, cool. All right, so that's the plate these micro switch will be on. Good deal. Do, 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 do. Some more coffee. And now we want to make sure that this uh, this plate for the micro switches is not getting kicked around by anything so we want to fasten it to the mounting plate in theory i mean that's what makes sense to me so i'm gonna go ahead and modify the mounting plate now do i have a top of mounting plate i don't i have things that are not labeled that's excellent All right, top of micro switch plate. And then this guy, bottom of spring. And then we can find top of mounting plate. Okay, so we only have a top of mounting plate, so we can throw a bottom mounting plate in here. Actually, I'll just use the top mounting plate. I take it back. So let's go ahead and project this out. Again, this was just round for the heck of it. I'm gonna go ahead and project out that plate as well. Make some construction lines, turn some stuff off so we can see what we're doing. Turn the body off there, all right. So, uh, actually, we can go ahead and use the same outline as the mounting plate, just keep everything square. And I'm just gonna toss some uh, holes in here. And we will connect these two plates. Uh, the question is, this is a little bit of a distance here. I wonder if I have bolts long enough is the biggest question. So let me see where we're at on distance. 
distance, 40 millimeters. I actually do have 40 millimeters. I think I have up to 50. All right, so we should be fine. And I will make these. Actually, that's a good question. Is my 50 millimeters in M4s or M5s? Looks like they're M5s. Sorry for knocking the mic around, my bad. So, since they're M5s, I'm going to make these M5 mounting holes. And... Let's see. Best way to do this, I think, is just to take this offset, minus 3, or minus 2, let's say. Oops, control Z. Select everything. And then make this tangent. Uh, that is a fascinating way to be tangent. Okay. Uh, let us instead... Huh. I guess because it's a weird shape. So, in that case, let me... How do I want to do this then? Let us turn these bodies back off. I'm going to toss because this is the... Where is your center arc? That's your center arc for you. This is... I guess I'll just do this and instead of doing all four because this is getting a little bit hairy we'll just define one and rotate it around like normal so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we bisect this plate along the corner and we'll toss you onto that you are now quinkadink and let me try to tangent that again because that did not make sense okay that does not make sense now Interesting. Um, let's do this then. This is a little bit of a hairy trick here, but I'm going to take a point, make the point quinting between both the line and the circle. The problem here is that if there's a big enough change on the design, uh, this dot, this point very well may end up on the opposite side. Fusion may just go, oh, okay, that dot should be on the opposite side now. But I can use this point now to align that hole to that offset which is what we need to do right now. So this plate first is going to go ahead and become one with that guy. Actually, you know what? Um, yeah, all right, I take it back. Uh, where is my outer circle? I wanna make sure I don't screw up accidentally the clearances that I have in this hole right here. So I'm gonna turn this outer circle back on Try to turn that outer circle back on. Oh, I'm not inside the sketch. Good call, good call. There we go. And then I'll extrude this and join. That way I'm not messing up my clearances on the inside. To object. Try again. Join. Good. And then we can extrude like we were talking about and we'll be good. Distance all and flip and circle pattern easy peasy features hole uh one of these things i guess i'll just use that circle as the reference that con uh, not construction line but sketch line all right there's our mounting holes uh the next thing actually we could do we could have done i should say let's back up a little bit Let's do this a little differently. I'm gonna cut this, but I'm also going to have the micro switch plate on. We're gonna flip that over and we're gonna cut both at the same time. Now you do see that this is uh, running into here. Uh, one of those things that is solvable. We can make the plate bigger. Uh, the only issue is even if we make the plate bigger, it's going to sweep this uh, prong is going to sweep through this slot distance here. We got to remember that. So it's actually better to bring this hole further in to dodge that tongue. So that's what I'm going to do. So we'll just hop back up into the sketch. One of these things is an easy thing for us to fix here. So I'm just going to go minus five. 
and then we will do the same thing we we're about to do and we should hopefully miss this time distance all and this is trusting that my model is accurate which at the very least the uh what you call it probably is objects to cut there we go much better uh we're barely missing so i think i will bring it in a little bit more the question is where we want to put the bolts and where we want to put the nuts so since that is still an open question let's see actually you know what the bolt can go up here because we also need to attach this to the prototyping rig yeah. hi wrath thanks for joining in so yeah we're gonna go ahead and keep this as is uh, the nut can go on the bottom and the nuts will just be lock nuts I think to keep things simple rather than capture nuts that way I don't have to add extra plastic down here this actually isn't a problem we can print this on this side so we could add extra plastic on the bottom no problem I'm just a bit concerned back to these prongs and I don't f we have a little bit more space to move it so maybe I will and then if we need to update the design we will just do that so minus seven and that brings it further far enough in that we probably aren't going to yeah, well rather than we probably won't let's just take a quick look doesn't hurt to check so here's my hex and let's see what the m5 nut is because i don't use m5s terribly often M5 nut. Do, 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 do. There it is. And the M5 nut. As soon as I got the bag open, I'll be able to tell you how wide it is. One of these things, sometimes I wonder whether it's not quick or not. I just Google, but. 785. 787, maybe. Let's go 7.9 just to be on the safe side. So if this is 7.9, and then I'm gonna go ahead and actually I should be able to just grab this anyway. Make this parallel to that. Yeah, we don't really dodge it. So I guess we do move that circle in a little bit more. We still got plenty of space on the inside here. So just continue to tweak. Go minus nine. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be good because we're just barely, I mean, we're the thickness of this, which is like, I wanna say less than half a millimeter. I wanna say these are less than half a millimeter. All right, they're 0.6, slightly off. So regardless, we moved in two millimeters. The uh, distance we needed to make was 0.6 millimeters. Two millimeters is much more than 0.6 millimeters, so we're good. So let's pattern this guy around. Doink, doink. And again, we'll just use this uh, sketch circle that we have here because it is centered to everything. It's the easiest one to get because this hole right here is actually a dome, so I'm a little skeptical of using that. And there are our mounting holes. And again, I may just throw lock nuts on the bottom here if I don't, then we have space because we moved that all the way in to add some plastic around to capture the nuts and the, the bolt heads will just go on top. So that is the game plan there. And now we can go ahead and add the attachment for the, well, actually here's the question. Here's the next question, whether or not I want to print sleeves for, yeah, I guess I'm going to need to, aren't I? Yeah, all right, so we'll get those added in too. Let's add some more color now that we have this new piece, orange. There we go. So in order to keep these guys separated by an appropriate distance, we'll have to add some stretchers in here. Stretchers, uh, sleeves, whatever you want to call them around the bolts. Uh, let me just look at this guy because I don't recall seeing him in here. So 
Right, so here's the plate. Here's the bottom plate. Here's the top plate. So what do we got in the middle here? Is it just plastic? Yeah, it's looking like they just... Okay, so it's molded into... If you look at right here, here and here, I think that's it just molded in there. Let me try to open up that win uh, that image and zoom in. Yeah, okay. I think the spacing is automatically molded in there. It's a little hard to tell in this image. But uh, let's joystick break down images. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, never mind. Not an easy Google search, image search, evidently. So, like I said, uh, it looks like it's just molded in there. Instead of molding it, instead of printing it, uh, we could. Technically speaking, we could. I prefer, however, to print this uh, with this side up. So, if we're going to print this with this side up in order to have a better service finish right here in this dome, then I can't put them on the bottom. We could, however, print it upside down. And if we're really concerned about that service finish on the dome, we can add supports. Supports aren't as good as printing flat, but it'd probably be acceptable. And therefore we print it like this and have the spacers coming up like this, printing upwards like this. That's reasonable, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and print the spacer separately. So let's go ahead and get those uh, designed new component spacers and these spacers very simply are just going to be circles that's all they're going to be and they're just going to be in place of or in where these holes are centered on these holes there we go that's the word I'm looking for and I don't want to grab the mounting plate because that has extra crap on it we'll grab or I'm sorry micro switch plate we'll grab the micro the mounting plate instead and make all these construction lines toss these guys back in here because these are so simple i'm actually going to just model all these up right here uh, instead of making them individual components and you know for example circle patterning around they're just way too simple so i'm not going to bother it's a waste of time and effort to make them components uh there are benefits i will say just because back to aligning and joints but that seems not necessary to me based on the joints that we already have in place right now. So given the way that we already have this laid out, not entirely important to have them as their own components. Again, technically, yes, technically they would have some use, some benefit of being their own components, but we do not need those benefits right now. So we're not going to take advantage of them green plastic uh spacers there we go and let's turn everything back on so we can look at our masterpiece before we connect it to the uh what's caught to the uh 2020 uh yeah so that should be everything okay i mean technically speaking let's go ahead and add the actuator in here Again, assuming that we're going to print our own actuator instead of buy one because it doesn't seem terribly necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and actually let me make sure that I am inside of the shaft assembly is where this should be. And we will come down to... Uh, so the top of the actuator should be where this button is. Uh, we can actually do it from the mounting plate. I think so from where the micro switch attach, attaches the mounting plate that is not construction that was inspect there we go so this is going to be bottom of mounting plate and actually it would be better one of these things or micro switch plate it would be better for that construction plane to be over here but we will be going directly from here with the actuator and it's one of these things we can always adjust it up and down I'm going to make it uh, probably the full thickness i don't see any reason not to make it the full thickness of the micro switch but maybe there's a reason actually there probably is a reason which is uh back to we ha have a little bit of a problem with space on the inside here which making it a little bit smaller might help us with so 
maybe I do just make it like four millimeters and it's one of those things we can adjust its placement up and down so that will be good enough where did this construction line go there we go bottom of micro switch plate there we go and now we're gonna hop back over to shaft assembly create a new component and this is going to be the actuator and then we will go ahead and use that bottom micro switch plane and make the actuator project the shaft look at it turn the stuff we don't need to be looking at off do 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 and then we can just make this let's say uh, again the size of this is going to determine some things um the burr, 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 burr. i think i'm gonna go with the two millimeters so our micro switches start our micro switches in theory start five millimeters i think it was off of the shaft i think we did minus four minus five no we might have done minus four minus four so if they start four millimeters off the shaft then we only want you know half that distance let's say and again it may be tweakable we may want to change that uh, although the micro switches could be moved instead so i'm just going to go the two millimeters off the shaft actually if i go two millimeters off the shaft i take that back we won't have any room for the uh rest of it to actually hold it in place actually i'm not going to have much to hold it in place anyway yeah let's just make it two millimeters and call it a day and it's one of these things where uh let us make it i'm gonna call it five for right now let me take a quick look at the mounting uh, the micro switches on the mounting plate yeah okay that is not the same size as the mounting uh, micro switches on the mounting plate which is what i wanted i want it to be smaller those are about nine so actually i'm going to back up and make this four instead so that we have even more room to adjust up and down uh, within the range of the micro switches and how this stays on there is a little bit skeptical first off it can just be printed tight you know to the shaft so it doesn't want to move to begin with uh we may want to um, i don't particularly want to glue it in place but that may just be the option because we're not going to be able to set screw it with it being this small and it being plastic one of those things actual actuators so let me just pull up joystick actuator I imagine they have set screws that's what I would imagine but I could be wrong no it actually doesn't look like it so how are you held in place oh it looks like it's actually just bolted onto the bottom of the shaft okay that's what it's looking like at the moment let me pull up another one yeah it's actually looking like okay no it says it has an e-ring on it so it has an e-ring on the bottom but i don't see what's keeping it from sliding up the shaft which is a little interesting huh interesting interesting i'm not sure what keeps it from sliding up because it doesn't show a e-ring on the top of it as well one of these things i should honestly buy a joystick just to have to tear down and see specifically i found enough diagrams and i found that site obviously right over here you know i felt confident enough i was like okay i see everything that's going on here but i still have some questions it looks like so uh you see how there's an e-ring on the bottom here actually so there's an e-ring on the bottom here but it doesn't say there's an e-ring up here uh, this restrictor straight gate just for the record again i said this but uh, that is only to restrict it in the number of directions it can turn that's why we don't have one on the bottom so we have this this is our spacers right here this box right here that's our mounting plate this is the dust panel that we're not using and then this is obviously the rest of it so we have everything done at this point it's just i'm not sure how this e-ring stops this actuator from sliding up the shaft is my biggest issue at the moment and I'm, I don't see anything else in the diagram, and I don't see any other parts broken out. So there's the actuator right there, or a actuator. 
but I only I see three E rings, although those could just be three different types of E rings. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, one of these things, we will work with it for the time being. Yeah, if you look at the shaft, you can see the groove on the shaft right here for the E-ring. The snap ring, whatever you want to call it. But there's no additional groove above it to stop it from sliding up. So I may just be overcomplicating and over worrying about things. That's definitely a possibility. It may just be a non-issue, which is why nobody bothers with it. So, uh, like I said, uh, it may just be, I mean, in that case, I could in theory put hot glue on the bottom of the shaft to keep it from sliding off the bottom. That is one solution. Uh, and that would, you know, not permanently fix it to the shaft point being. So uh, I think we'll make do is what I'm trying to say. Purple plastic. There we go on the actuator ring. And we'll hop up here, turn the, which call it back on. There it is, shaft handle, bottom plate. And there is most of, again, without the other two buttons, the other two buttons I will just add later on this side, this side of it. Spring goes in here. I haven't modeled the spring in, but you can imagine a spring going right there to keep it centered. Shaft swings in these directions hits these micro switches micro switches have slots to be adjusted in and out for throw uh, this actuator again in theory if it doesn't need to be held down which I'm a little skeptical of but whatever uh, we can just honestly just put a bead of hot glue around the bottom to make sure it doesn't slide off the bottom instead of try you know bothering with e-rings and whatnot so the only thing I'm looking at at this point well, the spring is going to, I was going to say, the only thing that I'm, mer, mer, mer. okay, so here's one last thing that we could do, is we could throw an extra plate up here, nah, you know what, I take it back, uh, this dome right here, there's a couple different things, I'm imagining that this got an E-ring or something, actually let's take a look at that picture because i think when i was looking at the shaft okay uh that's that that's that okay yeah 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 yeah. so i'm guessing you see this step down on the shaft right here i'm guessing that fits into the pivot and that keeps it from falling all the way down which is the last thing i'm worried about on our design is the shaft falling down uh all the way down so two ways we can do that one we can just put a collar on this and tighten the collar down to keep it from going down uh, we could glue this pivot to the shaft would be the other option so it's a relatively easy fix so not something i'm going to bother modeling up right now and with all that said now now we can go ahead and attach this to the 2020 and we will be done this design the first big problem I'm seeing with this is that we are quite large. So if I take this distance here, again, we're going to assume that these LED contacts are not here to the top here. That's 48.15. Uh, let us go ahead and pop open our buttons again. I'll do this one on the double extrusion. And we're going to expect from the bottom of this LED because uh, the bottom of this rather uh, contact to the bottom of the button yeah we'll do the bottom of the button okay so that's 45.6 so we actually do have clearance I was gonna say it looks quite large so I was a bit concerned that we would actually have the space but 45 is 45 so <laughs> I guess that uh means that we're more or less good obviously the handle here if I in, uh, I don't know if it's going to give me maximum height on the handle. Yeah, it only gives me to the minimum height, it looks like. So the top of the handle is going to be sitting up a good bit higher than our other buttons and stuff because the top of the handle, I'm pretty sure, is taller than this. Again, that's only giving me minimum height here, which is 21. And we've got 
minimum height from the uh, top of this to there of 15 so that we've got only six millimeters to make up here and this was 75 and a half which I said was 37.5 assuming that my math was not wrong so this is a good inch taller than our other things that we have mounted whether or not that's really an issue is not really you know it's probably not an issue honestly because let's face it normally your buttons are down in the control panel right they're flush ish you know they're just poking up a little bit off of the control panel and then the joystick the knob on the joystick is a good two three inches above the control panel so one of these things uh i do this through stream of consciousness deal so that you can listen to all the stuff that i'm worried about because when you're designing i think you need to be constantly reminding yourself of everything that can go wrong <laughs> that's the deal here uh that's why i'm outlining all these extra stuff that i then turn around and say maybe i'm over uh, complicating things it's good to at least acknowledge the things that could go wrong even if you're over uh over complicating things because just because they haven't gone wrong yet doesn't mean they couldn't go wrong in the future so let's go ahead and line this guy up there's our 2020 extrusion uh, you can see this rod is going to be actually let me flip that back around because i wanted it to sit as low as possible which means that the bottom of the 2020 extrusion should be even with this but the point still being is this rod is sticking out below the rest of this that's one of those things we could just trim down this rod doesn't have to be this long i just arbitrarily made it that long because i knew we were going to need the space so the rod can be trimmed down that's not any big deal uh, we are now aligned there now i just need to align it out the edge so that we can actually get to it and the next question is how exactly we want to mount this do, do, do. So there's that. Let me flip this now this way. All right. So now this is parallel with that. I'll go ahead and just slide him out a little bit extra just to give us a little bit of breathing room. And like I said, how we're going to mount this is another question. We may want to actually run multiple extrusions to mount this to. So over here, we have two different examples we have this three inch button across two extrusions i found out that really wasn't necessary and went down to one extrusion right here and fusion has decided that we're going to go very uh matte on the uh what you call it <laughs> on the preview so that's fascinating Anyway, point being is that over here on these ones, I could hit this guy pretty darn hard and it doesn't actually matter. However, I don't think we're going to try to get away with the joystick on just one extrusion. I think we will go ahead and use two extrusions. The next thing to consider with this is where exactly we're going to be mounting it to. And honestly, uh, the nice way of mounting it would be something like these buttons where we cover up all the inside workings of it. Uh, but I'm going to remind you that I haven't done the dust cover for this. I haven't done the nice dome top to make it look good. So the fact of the matter is, is that this is a prototype and we may actually just be best off. So in production, in theory, uh, and by production, I mean, you know, if I was going to install this into a cabinet, I would actually use these holes right here. Cut, uh, not cut, but shorten these guys up a little bit. I mean, eh, there's a couple ways you can do it, right? Uh, it depends. Because we have the dome on it, we actually could sit this on top of the panel, drill these four holes, bolt through it, th through the panel and then adjust this stuff so even though you know let's say the panel is four millimeters thick okay let's say the panel that this gets mounted on the cabinet that this gets mounted on is four millimeters thick just as a number i'm not saying that's realistic but just as a number well 
if we just extend the shaft down four millimeters, then the actuator is still in line with these, uh, what you call it? You know, just slide the, the actuator down four millimeters, extend the shaft if necessary, is what I'm trying to say. Then that will still be in line with these guys, and it doesn't really change much. It doesn't change enough. So this plate could actually be mounted to the top or the bottom. If it's mounted to the bottom of the cabinet uh, shelf uh, panel, if it's mounted to the bottom of the panel so you can't see this mounting plate, uh, in that case, nothing actually changes except for maybe, again, the shaft. Maybe you make this shaft a little bit longer and slide the shaft up in that case in order for it to have a little bit more clearance on the handle. So with all that said, we are probably just going to keep this as simple as possible, I think. And what that means, um, eh. so I either want to attach and what that means is I either want to attach whatever we put here on the extrusions to this plate or that plate. I was gonna say this plate because it's closer. That's what I was getting at. I was gonna keep it simple and put, put it to this plate. The problem is that obviously that plate is below ground level here. A week, it's one of these things where we could in theory raise it up a little bit. This distance right here is what, maybe six millimeters? Eight millimeters, all right, I'm off by two millimeters, whichever. So we could in theory just lift this whole entire thing up by eight millimeters and have it flush with the extrusion to keep it simple. Uh, the only reason I may not want to do that. Do, do, do. So there's two reasons. One, we're going to have to cut out four of these slots here so that we still have access to them. That's one consideration. The other consideration is that it's whoops sorry for that one the other consideration is that we've got a flat plane at that point that we're pressing down on which is not as strong as back to these cone shapes that i have over here on the buttons you know giving it support so if we do a cone shape up to the top plate that would at least give us a little bit of extra support so i think we will do that now let's get this guy just extruded out. Symmetric, we will go, uh, well not distance all, whole length and uh, I don't know why I did 10, that's a weird number. Let's go five inches just for a random number and join. And now we can just do, you know, one of those things, bring it down, have it sit on top so we'll put a plane here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We will make a new component. That's a good way to do it. New component, extrusion mount. And now, now we can go ahead and toss a plane up here, draw the mounts for that, and then loft up like I like doing. Lofting up is easy. At least easy to make things look halfway decent, is what I mean. So, I'm going to turn the rest of these guys off, because we don't need them at the moment. Uh, yeah, we can turn that off too. Toss this in here. Uh, as I recall, we're using 4mm bolts to bolt everything to this. It has been a while, but if memory serves correct, these are 4mm. Now I'm going to want this guy back so that I can get centered on this. So let's go ahead and grab that and center ourselves on that. Toss that on there, grab that center, go to that center and go to a right angle. These are construction lines. Whoops. I want everything here to be construction line, please. Uh, did we do it? We did. All right, cool. And the spacing on this, actually, let's go ahead and 
line it up to these guys. So let us right angle that. And that should be good. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now we just got to throw the plate on. So we'll center that up. Whoops, that missed. Good, good. Center that on that center line to keep everything symmetrical. Let's go ahead and get the full, uh, what you call it, full width of the extrusion. Just because we can. Not really necessary, but because we can. All right, turn this off to make it easier for me to select this. You are collinear there. And then we can just go give ourselves a three millimeter clearance and tangent that just like we did earlier. And that is that plate. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that up three millimeters. Nice solid three millimeters. Again, I found with the other things that it wasn't really necessary to go super thick. The fact of the matter is that I think we got it down to, did I even do a one millimeter? Wall thickness, let's see. What's the full title here? Thin walls, okay, so I just called it thin walls. What is your wall thickness shell? Yeah, one millimeter. So I did a one millimeter wall thickness on this guy and it was plenty strong enough. So one of those things, uh, the plastic's gonna hold up a good bit better than, better than I give it credit for, but, but I'm gonna go ahead and Still be a little bit uh, skeptical. Now we're going to want to go off of the bottom of the mounting plate. So let me track that guy down. That is not bottom mounting plate. I could have swore I, that's the top of the micro switch plate, right? I could have swore I called that top of micro switch. Could have swore I changed that name, but it looks like we didn't. So now we're just looking for bottom of mounting plate do i i have a top mounting plate i could have swear i made a bottom of mounting plate this is funny am i hallucinating that is a good question bottom of microsoft plate i guess i'm hallucinating i could have swore i had a bottom of mark uh bottom of mounting plate but i do not see it anywhere so since we do not see it anywhere let's hop in here toss that in then and make sure we name it and again the plan here is just to loft up to this plate and throw an extra plate in and we should be good and it will mount right through the five millimeter mounting holes Point being, point being. Grab that, project the mounting plate. And we will go ahead and turn that into a construction line. Do, do, do. I'm trying to think how much do we really need to dodge? I don't think we need to dodge it terribly hard. And by dodge it, this is basically what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just use this outline. I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to do something like this, for example, and just run two strips across the inside here to mount it to. But I think I will extrude the whole entire thing. And the reason I made this, uh, construction line is because this one I do want to be a square that's a random line because fusion does that boink 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 right angle right angle and then you collinear with that collinear collinear I do want this to be a square shape because we're lining up to this plate down here Actually, I could make it, I could cut the corners here a little bit if I wanted to. Nah, I don't want to. Okay. Now, we have this. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out for now. 
let's yeah, I'm gonna call it two millimeters I I do think I might be going a little bit overkill here with the three millimeters so I'm gonna come back here and change that to two as well and now it's just the lofting part lofting part is easy we go ahead and throw in some profiles and we are off to the races so just going to project that and actually I should and I said this was easy but one thing we want to do is we want to make sure we don't run into the stuff in the way uh, the only thing in the way if we look at this let's look at the mounting plate is potentially these guys because we're above everything else here we're above the micro switch plate we already knew that to begin with so I'm gonna bring these guys out just so that I can see them but I wasn't planning on going that thick with the walls anyway so that's why I didn't really think we were gonna run into anything but I wanted to bring it to our attention that we potentially could run into stuff in theory because stuff is there in fact as it turns out so let's just toss a two millimeter wall in here so that's our top profile our bottom profile we'll just do down here project and do the same exact thing uh, down here we want to make sure that we have room for the heads of the bolts but like I said we're not going to get anywhere close to that so it's not necessary but it's something to keep in mind this is going to be a two millimeter wall here and then we're just going to loft these two together and that will be easy peasy easy way to get it done loft and loft there we go uh, not a very interesting shape you can see the other shapes on the other buttons are much more interesting but one of those things if it gets the job done I mean I can do some stuff some funny stuff here like you know round some corners but you know here this guy too all right there we go and I'll run these guys while we're at it all right it's not as ugly now are we happy <laughs> it's not as ugly but it's just need to be functional is the whole entire point so that's what we got mirror features that loft uh, we also want actually that plate and these edges in theory we could have only extruded half this plate and also near this plate but that is not terribly necessary at the moment now one of these things again mirroring over the origin is a little bit of a gamble but I don't think we're going well that was good <laughs> okay good it just I had it okay I thought that something went wrong there obviously something did not go wrong uh, it looks like our fillet just did not happen on this side but that's an easy fix and that is actually an easy fix by unselecting the fillet and just doing it separately just reselect all these guys one of those things no reason to uh, fight it at this point the uh, way we could have dealt with that huh you're funny did you not join do I have two bodies here no I have one body so why is the fillet not let us back up these look identical right all right so why is the fillet not functioning the same way on both sides Excellent question. There we go. Okay, I guess it was because I didn't have the bottom one selected yet. I guess that's all it was. All right, cool. There we go. So that's the mounting plate. We'll make this blue. Hodgepodge of colors. Yeah, we'll make it the aqua blue. So let's turn everything back on and give it one last look actually really quick create mirror 
that extrusion across there and actually that should be components select that guy mirroring across that plane okay and now we can turn everything back on and uh, there we go that should be everything obviously you can see i haven't bothered readjusting these guys like i said uh in this case actually for this specific design because i have a floor that i'm dealing with i will have to when i print these guys just print them two to three millimeters smaller again it, things are adjustable here so it's not that big of a deal but that is everything with the exception of the buttons again I didn't think we were going to have time for it. It's been an hour and 40 minutes and nearly 10 o'clock. So I am not going to bother because things could definitely go wrong doing these buttons given the odd shape of the handle. I will do those off stream when I get a chance. Otherwise, I will start printing up all the other parts. I'll get it put together and you will be able to see it sometime soon. Trademark. Coming soon. Uh, the only last thing I can think of that I didn't do is back to this rigid group. So let's check that really quick. Yeah, okay. So this rigid group should just be dragged to the end. If it can be, it can't be. All right, never mind. It's not happening. <laughs> not at the moment. It is too late. I'll deal with that another time. So we have a controller that works. Boop, 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 boop. Hits the buttons. It's mounted to the extrusion. And it is a cool and interesting design that was the point and that is what we have managed to finally achieve so again look forward to this one getting added to the prototype controller again this probably will not be the last uh controller that we will be doing right now i'm working around the what is it called basically the generic uh diy controller package that you can get off of amazon that gets cloned everywhere diy controller let me see what the what they normally call it by i mean it's one of those things it gets cloned so i see a bunch of different names on the different uh types but it's the single board breakout board that's specifically for controllers i'm bringing this up because i researched for the other project that i uh i not spoilered but uh hinted at earlier teased there we go that's what i'm looking for the other project that i teased earlier uh, that one i was researching doing research for and i found out i well i didn't find out i was hoping and i finally found an hid library for arduino that has various hid human inter interface device usb interface device uh profiles on it which is very very useful which means that we can and it had it had its own joystick hid profile on it and therefore we are not restricted simply to this joystick we can create our own joysticks so long as they conform to whatever that library needs in order to make them functional so one of those things not really necessary on this guy because this guy conforms to the joystick breakout board that we have the diy joystick breakout board that we have so it's not really necessary for this guy however there are other ideas that i have that i'm interested to try that would be more useful with arduino only question is obviously going forward uh input lag so we'll have to see if i do use that library what input lag looks like because it's going through the arduino microcontroller whereas this board is very low level board and therefore has very little if any input delay one of those things they say zero delay all of them say zero delay on them advertising is advertising i'm not going to say that i'm going to take it at face value it very well may have zero delay but that is not something i know for absolute certain i just know that it's darn close to zero delay at any rate so for any future projects that we do use arduino for we do have a tool for that which i'm happy about but we're not really sure whether or not it's uh going to be good enough is the point so anyway that is this has been the first joystick in the uh arcade prototype controller project i'm very happy about it all right technically it's kind of the second joystick if you count the bi-directional controller here 
but we're not really counting that one. This guy, honestly, I should archive because this guy down here is the inferior version to the bike uh, controller here. So let me go ahead and archive this guy. Where's the archive button? Do, 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 do. I don't see the archive button. That's funny. Huh. All right. Anyway, I'll figure out how to archive that so we don't have to look at it later. Anyway, as I was saying, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Had a higher than average number of viewers this week, which I'm very happy for. Thank you very, very much. And obviously look forward to all the other stuff we're going to be working on coming this weekend. Again, off for D&D &D tomorrow night. Uh, obviously, again, D&D &D is pathlesspod.com, pathlesspod.com. So if you haven't already listened to all our stuff we have over there, go ahead and give it a listen. And we, I will be back streaming on Saturday. As always, weekend will be, well, actually, um, got something going on Saturday. So I don't know how many streams I'll actually be able to do Saturday. Might just be one or two as opposed to the three I've been trying to hit on Saturday. Although, granted, <laughs> last week was a little bit of a bomb on the one because I didn't give myself enough time to prep. But uh, anyway, point being, at least two streams, hopefully, on Saturday. And then however many streams we can fit on a Sunday. And those streams will be, obviously, the animation program we've been working on. Uh, probably an update stream on this guy. And, if possible, the uh, other project that I keep on teasing... I have that one mostly done. It's got a little bit extra work to do, but not much. And then I just got to make sure that all the components on it work. Um, or I ordered the components today. Should be here within, you know, by Saturday. So if I'm able to show you guys that one Sunday, let's say, look forward to that stream. So as always, I hope you guys have a great and wonderful day, afternoon, or evening, wherever in the world. And I will catch you next time.